With any software that you're trying to learn, it is best to actually learn the interface first before you try to do anything else. So today, what I'm gonna show you is the edit page of DaVinci Resolve 14. So let's go ahead and go to the edit page by clicking down below here. Click on that and it should take you to your edit page. Uh, this is probably gonna take a minute because I wanna go over like each part of this page here so you can see where everything is at, at least most of it, where everything most of it is at. So let's go ahead and start with the media pull up top, top left. This is where you're gonna pull all your footage from. You can drag and, dra drag and drop it there, and that's good to go. Uh, you can change the uh, settings here by clicking here. You can use it at show film strip, if, if, film strip if you want, or you can just untick that if you want, that's fine as well. Uh, you can also make it thumbnail view or list view. So if you wanna see what the actual footage looks like so you can better see what you're dragging in, then that's better if it's in thumbnail view, but we'll just leave it in a list view for now. Let's untick media pool. Uh, effects media libraries also in the uh, top left. You're gonna see your transitions here, which there's a lot of them, pretty cool. And you can create custom ones too, like I did here. Uh, audio transitions are also there. Titles, generators, open effects plugins, and audio effects plugins. These ones comes, uh, these, this list here comes with the Vinci Resolve 14 Studio but you can also get plugins installed in the Vinci Resolve 14. They support that now. So clicking on the edit index, let's go ahead and close effects library. So we're just doing it one at a time. Uh, edit index is pretty much your history of what you're doing. So let's go ahead and click and delete this. You're gonna see that that just got rid of steps pretty much. If you control Z, it's gonna add that thing. So it's nice to see. So if you're trying to find what you did somewhere, you can find it here, click on it, change it, delete it, or add it. All right, moving on to the right side, it's gonna be your mixer. If you turn that on, it's gonna pop up in the bottom right, and it's gonna say A1, M1. A1 stands for audio one, which is this audio right here, this line, this track. So you don't actually have to go in each clip and raise them up. You can just click on your mixer and raise them up, up and down. Main one is your main mix, so that's all the audio is put together. You can control it with one master uh, mix tab here, button, whatever you call this, but you can move it up and down. That's pretty cool. Now the metadata, I know we talked about already in a previous video, so go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen it. All right, so clicking on the inspector view, you're gonna see the clips inspector or attributes for those clips. You're gonna see the video and audio. We're gonna go over the video first. This composite mode is pretty much just like how your layer acts. You can, I have it as normal, which it's just gonna act normally, but if you wanna add color, color burn, color dodge. If you're familiar, familiar with After Effects and Photoshop, it's the same exact settings, kind of. Uh, it just has a lot less. Uh, transform settings is your usual transform, X and Y. If you're trying to scale it, if you wanna untick the link button between the two, the relationship, you can do that as well, but it's gonna create some funky stuff. The position is just the position. If you're trying to reframe, let's say you have like 8K footage and you're just uh, finishing in like 2K or 81080, you can actually reframe your footage by using the position X and Y, pretty cool. Rotation angle as well, if you're using that, which I don't. Anchor point, you can move around the anchor point of which you want the zoom position and rotation to take place in. Pitch is gonna do something, pretty much warp your image, and yaw does the same exact thing. Now if you're shooting a gimbal and it's upside down, um, you can flip it up uh, right side up by clicking this right here. So that's a really quick tool if you're shooting upside down on a gimbal or something and you need to flip it upside down. Uh, cropping, you can also crop your footage by left and right, top and bottom, and you can increase the softness of that to feather it a little bit if you're creating some type of effect. Dynamic zoom is just an automated zoom effect. So you can ease in and it'll zoom in or ease out, stuff like that, ease in and out. Pretty cool if you're into that kind of stuff. Automated, really awesome. Unclick that for now. Read time and scaling, you can read time your footage. Uh, it's gonna use nearest frame later optical flow and it's gonna scale, how do you want it to scale? Crop, fill, uh, fit, fill, and stretch. And a resize filter is pretty much when you're scaling stuff, do you want it sharper, you want it smoother? Sharper is always gonna um, give you better results, but it's gonna kill your system. So just watch out for that. Uh, lens correction, I have not used, but if you want to, you can um, you know, see what it's doing right now. That's really weird. If you want, you can do it automated too, which is gonna analyze your uh, 
analyze your footage and it's gonna fix it for you. It's pretty cool. Okay, so moving on to the audio tab, uh, you can change the volume individually, obviously, of each, each clip. And you can also turn on equalizer, which is pretty amazing if you're like an audiophile and you know how to mess with these stuff, then it's already built in here. I think the Vinci Resolve's end game is they want it to be like After Effects, Audition, Premiere, and Speed Grade all in one software, which is insane. We'll get there in the future, probably. But all of these stuff here in the video, I uh, should mention they are all key, key frameable. So if you click on this, you can key frame these which are really, that's really useful if you wanna gradually increase the volume of something or gradually position something, you can do that here. All right, let's go ahead and unclick that and just hide the mixer so we can clean up our uh, workspace here. Uh, we need to go to, so this, uh, this window right here is just your footage view. Pretty much you can preview all the footage you are trying to import to your timeline. And on the right side is your timeline view. So that's what you're looking at right now when I scroll through here. One of the most important part of this page are these tools here in the middle. The A is your typical selection mode, which is A, your key, uh, keyboard shortcut A. This one is trim edit mode, razor mode, insert mode, and overwrite, written place. And we're gonna go over those real quick. So selection mode is your default one. That makes you, that lets you move stuff left and right, up and down. Awesome. Now in trim edit mode, if you press T or click this button right here, it's gonna go to trim edit mode. And you can see that your cursor changed. So if you have a clip like this, and if you hover it towards where the cut is, you're gonna see this little icon. That is your ripple edit. Pretty much you can just extend, shorten, or um, make your footage longer, and it's gonna affect the rest of your timeline. That's really useful so you don't have to like cut it and then you'll have to like delete stuff and it will have to ripple it manually. That's really useful if you wanna move footage around like that. If you put it in the middle of the cut, that's gonna do, uh, it's gonna do something completely different. Hang on, I think I broke it. Control Z real quick. So we can go back to the usual. All right, so if you go back to the middle, you see this, this uh, icon, cursor icon changed, and this is just kind of like moving your clip shorter or longer, but it's not actually touching the rest of your timeline here if you add multiple clips there. So that's just kind of fiddling around what you want longer and what you want shorter. The next icon we're gonna go over is this icon, and this is just gonna scroll through your actual footage so if you want like a specific uh, shot that you want within without touching the rest of your clips and timeline, then you can do that as well. See, let's see. Uh, yep, you see that there's a shoulder there. You know what, let me reset this real quick so let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go reset these, reset all. And you're gonna see in this clip, there's a little, there's an elbow there. So I don't want that included. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of cut that away and there you go. So we begin when there's no elbows and we are good to go. That's the perfect example on how to use that tool. Now, uh, razor uh, mode is easy. It's uh, shortcut is B and that's pretty much just cutting your footage and then you switch to A and you can move them all around, whatever you wanna do. So control Z, let's just undo all that mess. So that's the razor clip mode. Now, the insert clip mode is, ooh, I just clicked it. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the footage that you have selected here and insert it directly in your timeline. So let's go ahead and open up Media Pool, double click this, go right here, and let's say we wanna insert this here. So we're gonna right click, mark in, and then mark out here. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna insert that here. So you're gonna click where you wanna insert it and just click it and boom, there you go. You just inserted that clip from the preview viewer to your timeline with one click. Pretty cool. And override is the same exact way. It's just gonna overwrite instead of adding it in between clips. So that's pretty useful stuff. We're gonna be using that a lot more. Um, snapping, I turn on because of this. You see that? I can, if I don't have that turned on, I can overlap a clip and that's gonna screw up my edit. So I make sure, control Z that again, so undo. I make sure I have that on so it automatically clip or magnet, whatever, it's a magnet. It'll automatically stick at the end of your previous clip, not cutting it in any shape or form at all. It's just adding to that clip. Linking, uh, make sure you have this clicked 
because what that does is separate your audio from your video which can screw a lot of stuff when you have a long timeline so if for some reason you're seeing this red mark in the bottom left corner and you see it's red and it's not synced with the audio make sure that that chain link is clicked because that's what it's for clicking that will wait see I screwed it up already so clicking this highlighting this and like clicking this should bring that clip together again and that's what you want you can add edit markers too if you're a color coded kind of person really nice and neat i don't use these because i'm color stupid but yeah timeline view options you can increase and decrease the size of your timeline so you can do the track height video really high or if you want your audio higher you can do that as well we can uncheck this if you don't want to see the waveform and you can show the flags and that. And you can also change the view. So if you click it this way, that's cool. And then you can click it this way. It's going to remove the actual video and you can't see it. So really useful. I, I think I used this one as a default there. Okay, this one is really easy. It just kind of zooms in and out of your timeline. No big deal. You got a volume here for your listening. And you also have a little uh mixture or not mixture you can see a little volume thing here a uh, level right here which is cool so if i play this you'll see it right there it's rising all right so moving on to the actual timeline itself this is where all the magic happens uh you're gonna see your video one and two and audio one and two you can add audios or videos by just right clicking add tracks add tracks for the video, same thing, add track, delete empty tracks and stuff like that. You can resize these. If you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of clips, you can make them smaller, but if you want it bigger, you can do it like that or you can do it the way I showed you earlier with this. So that's really useful. Uh, solo mode is just gonna solo that clip or audio by itself. If you untick that, it's gonna play all the audio in your timeline. You can mute it as well. You can. Um, you can also, if your computer is really slow, you can remove the video and just kind of edit using the audio, which I've done when um, editing 6K footage, sadly. So I would just edit using audio without any visual because I was too lazy to generate um, optimized media. But we'll go to that later. Uh, but you can lock the timeline so you can't change anything, which is useful if you don't want to, if you already have a locked edit that's really good as well now all this stuff is just really basic stuff and i want these tutorials to be just as basic as possible so anybody who's watching them from scratch can understand what davinci resolve is all about but that's all i got for you guys today if you have questions let me know and i'll see you guys next tutorial